name is Peter Higgins. I work for the University of Edinburgh as Professor of Outdoor Environmental and Sustainability Education. This talk is about the twin climate and biodiversity crises and the challenges and opportunities for education. Now, we've had a great deal of concern over COVID-19 over the past 18 months or so. And yet, behind COVID-19, there is another great crisis, which is that of a global recession, which is being dealt with through a range of economic measures. But there's a much greater one still, which many of us will be thinking about because of the recent climate conference in Glasgow, and that is climate change. But there's another behind that, which people often don't think about, but is increasingly coming to the fore, which is the biodiversity crisis, the collapse of nature. These are really big issues, and in the end may dwarf coronavirus. What we've done to our planet is referred to increasingly by um, a range of academics as the Anthropocene, uh, essentially a distinct geological stratum. If you imagine someone coming back to, um, to, to the Earth sometime in the future when there are no humans here and digging down through the various strata, they will come to a place where we have modified the Earth to such a degree that it becomes a geological stratum. Now that is a very significant consideration. We're the only species ever to have done that. The relationship between nature and climate is really uh, absolutely tight. Um, nature is climate, climate is nature, and we need to think about these two issues in that way. Now, I work in Scotland, I work for the University of Edinburgh, and Scotland is part of the United Kingdom, but actually it has a range of its own laws and a range of responsibilities, independent responsibility for education, health and infrastructure. And the Scottish Parliament, which we, we now have uh, only maybe a kilometre from where I'm standing at this moment, uh, was established in May 1999 after a 300 year gap uh, from when we last had a parliament. Now, uh, the Scottish Parliament's interest in education has uh, very much extended into uh, the issues associated with sustainability education. And I've been involved in a range of different initiatives associated with how to bring sustainability within to Scottish schools. And uh, in 2011, I was given the job by the then Minister for Education to establish a group to look at the possibilities of uh, what they referred to at the time as one planet schools. In other words, could we have schools in Scotland that pretty much lived within one planet's worth of resources. Now, like many parts of uh, the developed world, we're living with about three planets worth of resource at any one time. So this was about helping schools to change and helping the education systems to change. The idea of sustainable development has been around for a, a good long time. Uh, the Brundtland Commission back in 1987 defined this as the ability to make development sustainable to ensure that it meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. It's fairly heavily focused on people, of course, whereas uh, we really should be thinking about that in terms of the whole planet. But in terms of education for sustainable development, it wasn't until 1992 at the Rio Earth Summit that there was a call for environmental education to, uh, to ensure that young people developed understandings of what we were actually doing to the planet. Now, this idea became uh, education for sustainable development eventually. Now, my colleagues and I have not been all that convinced by the effectiveness of education for sustainable development. If you think about it, if it had been very effective, we wouldn't have the same global crises that we have at the moment since 1992. That's uh, it's a good long time when we should have actually been making progress. So we, we started from the position that we th needed to do some research and we needed to think about what were the expectations for young people that are born today in the 21st century and what do they need um, from us as educators to prepare them for a future. These young people may live to the end of this century, to the year 2100, so what will they see in their lifetime? Now, one of the things we concluded was that we needed to find ways of working our way to relate all this complexity that young people find when they're uh, in their school years. And look how we might find ways of connecting them to the world. 
and understanding that complexity. And that is a, a way in which you start to help young people to develop an understanding of the consequences of their actions, whether it be in terms of sustainability, whether it be in terms of the decisions they be, make when they vote, right through to an ethic of care. So trying to link this idea of connection with care was a big theme in our research. And we concluded that the education systems of the world are going to have to adapt to prepare us to, to deal with these complex, uncertain issues and to deal with change. Learners will need to be prepared in terms of knowledge, skills, critical awareness, attitudes, personal qualities and, above all, the ability to continue to learn. We did quite a lot of research on this and we used this in the work we did for Scottish ministers in this One Planet Schools project. And we concluded that because we've forgotten that we're part of rather than apart from the environment, we needed some form of education in nature as part of our version of education for sustainable development in Scotland. So here in Scotland we have ESD, Education for Sustainable Development, it's a term used by UNESCO um, and it's globally uh, common. Also we have global citizenship which is caring about people in other parts of the world, not your own, and often in the developed world of course people in the global south. And those two are often linked, but nowhere as far as we know uh, is outdoor learning linked with these. So that was our conceptual base upon which we started and we developed this notion that uh, there should be a whole school approach which enables the school and the wider community to build the values, attitudes, knowledge, skills and confidence needed to develop practices and take decisions which are compatible with a sustainable and more equitable future. But the reports that we produced in 2012 and 2016 linked with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and they were accepted by Scottish ministers, three of them actually, the Minister for Education, the Minister for Environment and the Min Minister for International Development. This is quite unheard of but it indicates the Scottish Government's integrated approach. What does it say um, in terms of policy? Well, all learners should have an entitlement to learning for sustainability, the term we use in terms of integrating these three ideas. Every practitioner and school and education leader should demonstrate learning for sustainability in their practice. Every school should have a whole school approach to learning for sustainability. It should be integrated with the UN Sustainable Development Goals and it should be integrated with academic subjects and schools inspections. Um, we also felt that we needed to work um, much more carefully with Scottish teachers and in particular we established um, a range of professional development opportunities that have been supported by the British Council and these have been running for the last eight years in Scotland. We also built some massive open access online courses uh, which we've used in Scotland and we've also used internationally. Uh, to broaden these understandings of sustainability and we developed two for the Glasgow uh, COP, COP26. In the last few years we've managed to integrate all of this with the school's inspection framework and also uh, with the, um, uh, the qualifications that, are, um, that young people take in their school years. Um, this is, a, a, as far as we know, a, a kind of global first because we have an integrated system. Now this isn't uh, fully implemented across the whole of Scottish education but at least the framework is there and in place. Now I just want to finish with some thoughts on the employment opportunities for young people that come from all of this. Now it isn't just about being sure that they're good learners who understand sustainability, understand the consequences of their actions and the way in which they vote and so on. There should be employment opportunities here because I've been talking a lot about education but also about environment. There are also opportunities in terms of community development, there's uh, real significance in terms of the time people spend outdoors with regard to their health and well-being and there are strong links to Scottish culture, heritage and languages as well as of course agriculture, forestry, fisheries and food. And then increasingly in Scotland there are opportunities for young people with regard to nature tourism and adventure tourism, taking people into the outdoors. Now, um, you may have come across the idea of nature-based climate solutions. It's become quite um, a big issue of late. And this goes back to linking the biodiversity and climate crises. 
Now, David Attenborough, the great naturalist and broadcaster, has said the only way out is to rewild the world. And what he's actually meaning is that we need to protect and restore our forests, our mangroves, our oceans and our peatlands. And in Scotland, we have um, made significant commitments to doing so and uh, plan to protect 30% of our woodlands and forests and 30% of our, um, our seas uh, by 2030. We've also uh, invested £250 million in peatland restoration. And the point about peatland restoration and about, um, about woodland restoration is that these are carbon sinks. They absorb the CO2 that we exhale when we breathe out they absorb carbon dioxide that's produced through industrial processes and agriculture. So there will be employment opportunities in doing this as a key contributor to Scotland meeting its target of being net zero by 2045. Now, my final thought really is this, that, that good planets are hard to find. We've got one. It's a very beautiful planet and we have been sustained by it throughout the whole of our evolution. And now, finally, the planet is in need of our help. We should not expect this to be handed on to future generations. It's the young people of our world are really angry about the situation they find themselves in, having to deal with the mess of our generation and previous generations. Most of the damage that we've done has taken place over the last 250 years since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. And my final point is really that uh, our generation has a duty not to engage in the wishful thinking, and it is wishful thinking, that the problems that we've caused can be left for future generations to solve.